we heard so much about films like La La Land and The Shape of Water in 2017. Why are these retro movies so popular amongst um, filmmakers and audiences? Well, people like nostalgia. Nostalgia is a cheap drug and it's an effective drug. Um, so it's always been, but then again, it's always been like this. I mean, this year, obviously, there have been, uh, maybe it was even more prevalent this year than it, than it was before, but Hollywood has always peddled in um, the, the older, the olden times, if you like, uh, even going back to the to the beginning of of cinema. Uh, why? Um, is it because it's people seem to be rebooting everything these days. You know, mm. there's a new Star Wars film. There was a, there was an Alien film, and and you know, just yesterday I was reading about Doctor Who. Just today, reading about Doctor Who is this endless television program. Um, so there's this whole bunch of stuff that's just being regurgitated over and over again. Mm. That's just been the way uh, it is. But the interesting thing about uh, La La Land, for example, and that film actually, you know, feels years and years and decades ago now, but it was only like eight, nine months ago. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing about that film is it cautions people on the power of nostalgia and mm. how you shouldn't really be um, taken by it. Uh, whereas, it has its cake and eats it too, I guess. Okay, so we also heard about how Okja caused a major movie-going shift by being released in cinemas and online on the same day. Yeah. Um, do you think this is going to be a trend? Are we going to be seeing more of this in 2018? Yes, definitely. Well, just three days ago, Netflix, it was the, the Okja was, was released by Netflix. It's a Netflix film. Um, and Netflix released its its biggest budget uh, movie to date um, on Friday, mm -hmm. called Bright, about orc cops. I did. I watched it. It was a, it was pretty good. <laughs> did you? I, I did. It was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Well, well, you know, it's 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 a fairly obvious metaphor, I think. Yeah. But but, you know, it's like Harry Potter for adults. Yeah. Um, but you know, horses for courses. I'm not okay. going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so uh, they are they are coming into their own really with with releasing their own films. This year they released a whole bunch of films. Only only some of them really uh, many people talked about. Yeah. Um, it is definitely going to be a part of the cinema going atmosphere for the for the for the next few years. Uh, forever, really. I mean, things are changing. People like to people don't like to leave their sofas and want to watch everything um, from the confines of their homes, and which is a bit of a problem. You know, for me, it it always feels like you have to see a film at the cinema. You know, in this yeah. giant screen. It where... does have a different aura. I of have to course, say. it does. Yes. Okay, so women were always a subject of. Uh, something that people would always speak about mm. in the cinema industry. Um, we've seen more women directors behind the camera, yeah. and we're seeing more lead roles, um, which is great. Uh, do you think that it's going to continue like this, or...? No, they should go back to the kitchen. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 well, it's a good thing, but I, I don't think Hollywood should start patting itself on the back yeah. just yet. Okay. Um, yes, there are a number of high-profile directing gigs that went to women and women of colour as well, mm. and which is very important. But this is still a minor, minor proportion in comparison to everyone else, which is, mm. you know, white men. Um, of course, that this trend will continue. I think people are speaking out about it. It's very important, which is a good thing. But I don't think we're there yet. Um, it's the beginning uh, for, for this new phase. I totally agree. Phase. So do you have a favourite movie? I do. Yes, I do. Um, I loved Dunkirk. I thought it was great execution. Uh, I loved the death of Louis XIV, uh, the Sarah film, which was great. Personal Shopper, another um, Olivier Assayas film, which I thought was excellent. Um, I loved Train Spotting too. You oh. see, because yes, not a lot of people. I've, I've, not a lot of people have mentioned it in their year-end list, but I thought Train Spotting too was excellent, almost as good as the first film. Um, which was uh, surprising, really. Wind River, which is um, a great director, really, and uh, you know his uh, previous one last year with uh, uh, um, one of the Chris's. Well, you, you have know, loads of favorites. Yes, yes, loads yes. of favorites. What are you looking forward to in 2018? The Irishman. 
Okay. Uh, the Martin Scorsese film, I'm very much looking forward to that. The Death of Stalin, mm -hmm. uh, not the event itself, that's happened. Yep. Um, the film, uh, it's, <laughs> Armando Iannucci is, is very, is, is a genius really, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, uh, th there's uh, there's an Adam McKay film called Backseat with Christian Bale as Dick Cheney. Looking forward to that, that should be interesting. Well, there are a couple of movies um, that's on my radar as well for 2018. Um, Ali, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.